Hello, my name is Nikos Karidis. I am senior lecturer at the School of Architecture here at the University of Kent. Most of my research has revolved around the idea of reconstruction. In architectural practice, reconstruction involves the full-scale recreation of lost buildings. In architectural history, reconstruction recaptures lost architectural forms, either on paper or on the computer screen. In both cases, reconstruction brings together the practices of design and historical research. Until the 20th century, these two practices, design and historical research, were both at the heart of an architect's education and work. Gradually, however, the design of buildings became independent from the study of their history. One might ask whether this separation was beneficial. In my research, I have found that combining the skills of architectural design and architectural history has major advantages both for the way we shape our cities and for our ability to understand their past. The first time that I used design skills to study historic monuments was during the, my investigation of the origins of the vaulted church. This focused on some of the earliest vaulted churches, uh, which date back to the early Byzantine period and are located in Western Turkey. Study of these monuments was essential to understand the transition from the timber roof basilica to the vaulted church. Now, this was a major technological development that marked not only the early Byzantine period, but the history of church architecture. One of the greatest obstacles in understanding this development was the rarity of its architectural traces. The remains of the first vaulted churches in West Turkey are so dilapidated that it is very difficult to understand their original forms. In most cases, only a few fragments of the vault survive. In the past, these fragments had been dismissed as amorphous masses of mortar and brick. However, I soon found out that by drawing these fragments, I was able to interpret them as part of a broader architectural composition. Now, there lay the hidden key to the visualization of these monuments. I soon found that each fragment, despite its complexity, preserved the design DNA, as it were, of the missing structure. Viewing these elements through the lens of the designer helped to use them as evidence for the first recent reconstruction of the missing vaults. This led to a new three-dimensional visualization of churches such as St. John at Ephesus, the Cathedral of Sardis, or even the Great Church of the Holy Apostles at Constantinople. The visualization drawings I carried out proved to be an excellent basis to study the development of the buildings through time. Seams in their fabric and constructional variations betrayed that some of these monuments were not built in one go, as we believed, but were real palimpsests of different phases. Design skills were essential to visualize lost phases. Indeed, recognizing and interpreting the different design elements that make up the final form of each monument was essential to achieve this. None of these discoveries would have been possible without the use of three methods. First, identifying the relationship between parts of the building and the whole building. Secondly, understanding the relationship between form and structure. And thirdly, using drawing as an interpretive tool. It is these typically architectural methods that help to shed new light in the form of the first vaulted churches and their development through time. The use of this methodology is not limited to lost buildings. It can also be used in the study of lost urban forms. I had the opportunity to test it in the study of the lost river port of early modern Rome. Inherited from the Middle Ages, this port underwent a major remodeling in the 18th century. However, both the Renaissance form of the port and its Baroque remodeling were lost forever during the construction of Rome's present flood defenses and riverside roadways. Reconstruction by design was once again the key to recapturing this lost gateway of the Eternal City. This time, our main source of evidence was a vast body of maps and landscape drawings of the port. However, the earliest of these documents were not sufficiently detailed to provide a full understanding of those spaces where the city met the water. As a result, the form of the Renaissance port was completely unrecorded and unknown. To visualize this form, it was necessary to detect fragments of its lost buildings and spaces recorded in later maps. These fragments were actually hidden in the maps and they had never been identified before. 
Viewing them through the lens of an architect and comparing them with a wide range of architectural forms helped to visualize the earliest early modern phase of the lost gateway of Rome. My work in both early Byzantine and early modern Roman architecture illustrates how design-based methods can help us gain a better sense of how lost buildings looked like. However, the applications of these methods are not only limited to academic exercises of historical reconstruction. Our improved understanding of architectural heritage reveals lost qualities and practical design methods that can play a major role in the regeneration of our cities. The more we understand historic towns, the more we are able to define their character. This has major implications for the development of towns like Canterbury. One of the greatest challenges of this development is the harmonization between new and old buildings. My recent work uses the analysis of the town's urban framework as a basis of a new strategy for adapting new buildings in the city's conservation area. This time, what is being recaptured is not a lost architectural form, but those qualities that make forms fit together. These qualities seem to be elusive today. Indeed, many new buildings in the city hardly fit within their historic setting. Unlike these recent examples, the historic core of Canterbury managed to reconcile aesthetic coherence and stylistic diversity. To understand how this was achieved, I analyzed and compared historic buildings of different periods. This revealed similarities in terms of scale, facade design, and the way in which the buildings interact with urban space. These similarities were explored graphically through 3D models and elevation drawings. Eminently architectural, this methodology helped to recapture the continuities between buildings of different periods. I'm now working with the local planning authority to identify those design elements that connect new and old structure. This helps to establish design methods that can enable architects, designers and planners to regenerate the city, preserving its unique tone and quality. The examples I mentioned illustrate that architectural methods are essential to recapture lost buildings and cities. The skills of the designer and the architect can make a major contribution to our understanding of architectural history. Those aspects that these methods illuminate are not merely academic, they can transform the way in which we view our cities and show us how to improve them. Thank you for listening.